Oh, I know that sound. It's time for the Beer and News Report. Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Beer and News Report. Cheers. I'm your host, Art Maurice. But as you can see, this is not the studios of Create TV in San Jose. No, I'm sheltered at home. And behind me is my game collection. I'm a board gamer. I got about 150 board games. And that's what I like to do in my spare time. Um, and that brings me to a point today. If you're stuck at home wondering what you can do, hopefully you have a, uh, a roommate or a spouse or family. And I want to point out some games that I think are pertinent to the times we're in. So the first game is Pandemic. This is a great game. It's been around since 2008. It's a classic. And in this game, you work uh, for the CDC and you go around the world curing pandemics. It's a cooperative game, so either everyone wins or everyone loses. If you already have this game, um, I recommend going to the next level, which is its expansion, Pandemic in the Lab. So in the base game, uh, this one, in the base game, you, you have to collect cards, and when you get a set, you can cure the disease. In this one, you still have to collect cards, but you use the cards to take samples, put them in the lab, and when you run it through the lab, then you cure the disease. They're both fun. They're both cooperative. I highly recommend them. But if you are not into card games, more into a dice game, then I recommend Pandemic the Cure. So this is the same version as Pandemic, but it's a dice version. And uh, it's a lot easier to set up. It usually plays faster. Uh, so you can also lose faster, but it's still cooperative and you go around the world trying to cure diseases. And finally, if you're the non-conformist type and you would rather have the diseases win than the people, then Pandemic Contagion is the game for you. Here you play the disease and you still go around the world, but now you're infecting diseases. And dang it, if the WHO isn't trying to stop you. So every now and then a card will come up that reduces your your ability to win the game. This is not cooperative. This is a, a you're fighting against each other. I can't think of the name of the game. <laughs> but um, this is not cooperative. You play and, and the person who infects the most cities gets the most points and that way you win. So I highly recommend all these games and they're tons of fun and if you have any questions check them out but I'll, I'll show a picture. So these are the four games I was talking about. You got Pandemic, that's the base game. Pandemic in the lab, and then if you want to play a dice game, it's Pandemic the Cure, and then if you want to be the virus and infect people, it's Pandemic Contagion, and that is a competitive game. All the rest are cooperative, so either everyone wins or everyone loses. Only Contagion is competitive, and there's only one winner. Enjoy them all. Okay, so cheers to playing board games. Now, as you can see, I cut my hair, and since I'm sheltered at home and can't go to the barbershop because the barbershop's closed, I did it myself. So here you can see the before and after pictures, and I have my shirt off in the before picture because this is right before I'm getting my hair cut, and then after I've already showered and put clothes back on, that's my after. So hey, I saved 20 bucks, just clipped it in. I'm not going to see anyone until the beginning of May because we are now sheltered at home for the whole month of April, but I'll get back to that when I show you the data that's coming up in a few So cheers to cutting your own hair and saving 20 bucks. Okay, I'm a data guy. I love graphs and charts and all sorts of data. And I want to give you three uh, sources of data about the coronavirus. So the first is from John Hopkins University website for the global cases of coronavirus. <clears throat> in this corner up here, you can see the total confirmed 846,000. And over here, you can see all the deaths. This is this is for the whole world. Total is 41,000. It's a little misleading because it shows here Italy with uh, 12,000 and then Spain. And then all the way down here is New York City, making it seem like the United States has about 932 deaths. But what you need to do is go over here where it says U.S. and we're leading everyone. We have 181,000 cases. But if you click on it, now it shows our total deaths as, whoops, hold on a second. There. And, and now it shows our total deaths here of 3,606. 
So, and, and then you can also see the chart down below of our growth. So we're still growing pretty strong and uh, we've got a ways to go. But the great thing with the United States, once you click on it, is you can then scroll through and see where all the, the well, unfortunately, the deaths are happening. And like as I scroll down, I can see my, my area, Santa Clara County, we've had 28 deaths. So I really like this. It's very interesting. And then I also want to show you down here at the bottom where it says admin 0, admin 1, admin 2. You can click on that. And it shows you the cases now. So you can see that New York now, at the time I'm recording this, has 75,795 cases. And then if you hit admin two, it now goes into confirmed cases by county. So you can kind of see not only citywide, but countywide. And you can hopefully pull up your, well, hopefully you can't pull up your, your county and see how many deaths are in there. So a very interesting page. I totally recommend you check it out. I'll put the link below. And um, if you have any questions, you can just email me or respond to my, my video. So next is from Santa Clara County. And this is the county that I'm in. This is a Santa Clara County uh, COVID-19 data dashboard. I like this because it shows me what my county's doing. One thing I just wanted to point out is down here where the graph of new cases per day. So we were going along and we hit uh, a height of about uh, let's see, 80 that day, 84 cases that day. And then everything went down and way down here, we hit 17 cases thinking, okay, well, looks like it's over, but no, the next day we went to 55. And then right after that, we went to 202. So, uh, we've had 890 cases so far. And when I was taping this yesterday, uh, so this is the 31st, and so on the 30th, we had 202 new cases with three deaths uh, for a total of 30 deaths. And uh, my, most of my viewers are in Santa Clara County, so I just wanted to point this out for them. I don't know if in your county you have this type of dashboard, but I thought, for me, it was very interesting. Also, thing to note, 75% of the deaths are from male uh, so females are only 25%. So COVID, <clears throat> excuse me, COVID seems to be hitting the males more than the females. And the last one is from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. This is out of Seattle, Washington. This one's a little bit morbid, but um, right here we got the United States of America, and it's showing us how many hospital beds are going to be needed. And this graph shows you a range. So the dotted line represents what they predict. Is going to be the case but the variance shows you I'm guessing standard deviations from this dotted line and down here so this purple one is all beds this green one down here is ICU beds and then the blue one below that is invasive ventilators needed so it kind of shows you in the upper right hand corner how many beds are needed and how much shortage we have but if you scroll down then we go to deaths per day, which that's scary. And you can see how it's going to peak. And it's going to peak around April. And and let's see, it's about April 15th is their prediction of, of how many deaths per day. And on that day, we're supposed to have 2,214 deaths. So it's a little bit scary. But if you keep scrolling, scrolling down, this now projects the total deaths that are going to happen and it sort of kind of limits itself. Uh, let's see. Well, anyways, uh, they predict 83,900, basically 84,000 deaths that are going to happen. But what I wanted to show you is if you go all the way back up, and instead of doing United States of America, you click on it, and like I pick California because that's where I'm at. So now in California, I can see that on April, uh, in the United States, it was April 15th was the peak, but that's not the peak for California. Our peak happens around April 27th, April 26th, April 27th. Um, and the good news is we seem to have enough beds available. There doesn't seem to be um, any shortage of beds. But let's scroll down, deaths per day, and we again peak at the end of April, and that one has about 122 deaths that day. But the, here's the really sad part. If we go down to total deaths, we're going to have 5,086 deaths. 
So uh, not looking good for California. But I also want to do Vermont because that's originally where I'm from. And all my family's back then in Vermont. So let's do Vermont. We click on it. And um, I mean, obviously, since it has lower population, everything's going to be smaller. Good news is you guys have enough beds available. You peak at around April 7th. So even before the, the nation, you'll peak. And uh, deaths per day, it's kind of spiky because, uh, again, your population's low. So some days you don't have any deaths. Uh, so let's just scroll down. And it's predicting that you'll have a total of uh, 69 deaths after this is all over. So, I mean, obviously that's a lot less than California, but it's still sad. And, and hopefully it doesn't hit any of my friends or family out there. I hope you guys are all staying healthy and staying indoors. So I just wanted to show you this. I will put all the links below for each one of these. So cheers to watching data and seeing how the coronavirus is growing or dying and how we can prevent it from getting to us. Now you may have remembered in my last show, I brought up a coworker of mine, a friend of mine named Fred, uh, Frederick Roberts. And uh, he does a show called Crypto News and Investigative Reports. And one of his shows, well, actually, uh, a, a, about a month or so ago, all the crypto news reports were shut down, not only from him, but from uh, other crypto people. And so we went, uh, Fred and I went to the headquarters of YouTube and wanted to ask them why. So we're at the headquarters and we got stopped by security and they wouldn't let us in. They said, there's a whole procedure you have to do before you can get anyone to talk to you or do interviews on anyone. And I kind of, you know, being trying to be the reporter that I aspire to be, I asked them why, why is this happening? And I don't know if you remember this, but back in um, 2018, there was a lady named, named uh, Nassim and she had a YouTube channel. She was a vegan and she was um, trying, doing shows on physical fitness. And YouTube changed this policy and they filtered, they were harder on filtering. And so she started losing money or not making as much money on her shows. And so she got mad and she went to the headquarters of YouTube and she just parked her car, walked into the courtyard and shot three people and then killed herself. So obviously that's going to raise some concerns and you're going to want to protect people. So now security is really enhanced. And even when we went into the parking lot, there were security guards walking the parking lot. So, uh, and I'm sure this is for, I don't want to just point out YouTube. I'm sure this is for a bunch of the corporations, not only in Silicon Valley, but around the nation, probably around the world. Um, in, in these times, security just has to be higher. But I wanted to point out that we can now treat the coronavirus sort of as an attack on corporations. And how are they going to prepare for that? Because you, should, you can't have a security guard at the front gate blocking the virus. So my guess is what they're going to do is start taking temperatures like at the TSA. When you get on a plane stuff, they check your temperature. And if you have a temperature, then obviously you're going to get quarantined. So what if, and I think it'd be a little hard for security to prevent or to check everyone coming in as they walk into the building. So what you'll probably have, or somebody will, some company will develop uh, a little uh doorway sort of like at a TSA when you go through the, that doorway and it's security to check you for metal objects to see if you're carrying any weapons well this one I think will be more like a temperature sensor and it'll it'll sort of read the infrared on your face or on your hands or something so it can check your temperature and as you walk through then you know it gives it a green light and you're okay you're okay and, and people will enter the buildings that way that's my prediction uh, from the effect that the coronavirus is going to have on corporations and I think that it, 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 for other places like restaurants and bars, it may be a little different because obviously they, you know, walking through a temperature sensor might discourage you from going to that restaurant or that bar. So maybe they get a little creative and, you know, you, you put the sensor in the handle of your, your beer mug. So when you grab your beer mug for a drink, it's sensing it. Maybe on the bottom it has a little RF transmitter that goes to the, the bar. And so the manager can see who has a high temperature and who doesn't, right? I'm I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but it's a thought, right? Cheers to high technology and higher security and safety for everyone. Now, one of the final things I want to point out is that with every opportunity, there is uh, 
we say, what they're saying is there's an opportunity in every crisis. And the bigger the crisis, the better the opportunity. I don't know who said that, but Google it. You can find it out. And so what I want to say is with this coronavirus, there's opportunities probably right around the corner that we're not seeing. So in my area, what I've noticed is that people don't want to shop anymore because they're scared to go in the shopping centers. They're scared to grab the carts because they figure people with coronavirus, they put their hands on the cart. They're scared to touch food or boxes because they feel people have touched it or coughed on them or something. So the delivery home services or the home delivery services from not only Amazon and, and all the other uh, e-commerce places, but from, from grocery stores and restaurants has really picked up in my area. So things like Uber Eats and Grubhub are really making record uh, business right now. And in fact, we, we had a, uh, the business so strong that the people who are delivering, the deliverers, went on strike because they want better security measures and, and uh, higher pay. Makes sense. Um, anyways, what I wanted to say is that we have to look for opportunities. And, and point, case in point, I have a buddy that has a pizza shop. And he has to close his doors because, well, not close his doors, but he can't let people eat inside the pizza shop. But he can do delivery or you can or takeout. And um, well, actually, he couldn't do delivery because his insurance wouldn't let him. But due to the coronavirus and all the changes and in, impositions in it's putting on his business, the insurance company now said, you know what? We don't want you to go out of business. We'll allow delivery. We'll cover you and insure you for delivery. So the thing is, you just can't turn it on like that. You have to set up stuff. You have to get the the boxes that insulate the pizzas so when you put them in your car you can dry places and it won't get cold plus you have to hire people to do the delivery because right now it just has cooks that cook the, the pizzas and people used to just eat in his, his place of business and now he's doing takeout which is has dropped his business down dramatically but this is an option it's an opportunity for him to expand his business so all I'm saying is keep your eyes and ears open because opportunity may be right around the corner and who knows what opportunities you may find. Well, as you can see, my beer is almost empty and uh, means we're at the end of the show. So I want to point out a couple things. Make sure to go out and buy some board games. I like Pandemic. I think it's a great game and I like all its expansions. Definitely check them out. Also, uh, you know, if you can find ways of saving cash, I just cut my own hair. I just said the heck with it. I took my trimmers and just buzzed it along. We're, I'm in my house for the next month. They just have extended. I'm not getting out till May. So I'm not going to see anyone. So I don't care what my hair looks like. Third, check out the, the graphs. I, I put links on, on all the graphs that I pointed out. I know some of them are just for Santa Clara County, and that's the county I'm in, and that's where most of my viewers are. But uh, definitely check out the one by John Hopkins. I think that one's a great one. And uh, by the way, if you click on it, you can see how the United States pulls up each state. And you can see which one, your state, how it's doing. Also, look for opportunities. Remember, the bigger the crisis, the better the opportunity. There's some that I probably didn't, I'm, I'm for sure there's some that I didn't mention. But if you keep your eyes and ears open, maybe you'll find something in this dark time that uh, will change your future. So keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, I will keep producing shows, and I hope that you like it. And if you really like it, please subscribe. There's a little subscribe button, and when you do, whenever I produce a new show, you'll get flagged by YouTube saying, hey, uh, Beer News Report has a new show. Check it out. Until then, keep your beer cold and your interest hot. Cheers.